Hello everyone, today we're going to be starting the C, uh, C tutorial series, sorry, I don't know what I said there. Um, we're going to be starting the C tutorial series. And the reason I did this, I have the C++ series kind of going, and I want to go into C because C will lead into other things, such as assembly, which we're going to be doing later on as well. So I'm going to start with C uh, before continuing with C++. Um, you guys may notice we're in Linux, and you guys may have also noticed that I haven't been uploading the past week, and I said I would be uploading custom zombie mapping videos last week, and I didn't. And the reason for that is Windows is being a huge pain. Um, I'll, I'll briefly cover it, even though it's not really part of the tutorial. There will be an annotation to skip my little rant here, but basically, Windows 10 is not being fun uh, on my desktop, uh, not only with Radiant, which is the program we use to design custom zombie maps, but with other things like Notepad, which is proprietary to Windows, so it should work fine, and it's the simplest program in the world. Um, if I go to open or save a file, the program will crash, essentially making what I do on that program useless, so until I can fix that, there's nothing I can really do in regards to the tutorial series, so I'm going to have to probably do a fresh install of Windows get all of that sorted out and when I have that sorted out um, we will begin that tutorial series again but for now we'll be doing C now I'll address why we're in Ubuntu and this is important um, the reason we are in Ubuntu is we're going to be coding C at a fundamental level and what I mean by that we're not going to be using an IDE uh, IDE stands for integrated development environment a very common example of this is Visual Studio and I did use Visual Studio and other IDEs and and on my channel before you know for C++ and and uh, Java uh, we use JetBrains and CodeBlocks and Visual Studio and I'm not doing that for C and the reason for that is IDEs are evil uh, for those who are just learning the language which I'm assuming you are if you're watching this video uh, the reason for that is an IDE hides things from you um, it allows you to just go on about your day, write some code, push a button, have it come up, and yay, your day's made. But you you don't know what's going on behind that. You don't know that, like, if you, if I did a C tutorial series on Visual Studio right now, you would know, okay, there's this function int main, and there's these other things, and you hit a button, and you compile it. But you, what you don't know is behind that, there's a build process going on. You're linking the files if you have multiple files. Um, and we're going to be covering all of that. We're going to be doing this all from scratch in GNU or Linux um, because it, it it makes debugging easier. If you go on later on um, just using IDEs right from the start and C, you're going to have to debug your programs. I can guarantee you this right now if you go anywhere in C or C++ or anything like that, you're going to have to debug programs. That's just a part of programming. and in C, if you don't know what's going on with making and building and all these things, you're going to be lost. Okay, you're not going to know what's going on. And for debugging, sometimes you need certain flags, and you're not even going to know what flags are if you're using an IDE, most likely. Um, so that's why we're going to be doing it from scratch. So what you're going to need, I'm using Ubuntu. If you want to follow exactly, I would recommend getting this. All you need to do is burn it to a live US or uh, live CD or create a live USB using software. You can dual boot, uh, and what I did, I installed it along with Windows. Uh, you don't have to, you can make a persistent USB. Or you can even just use a virtual box. Uh, you can download Oracle's virtual box and put a virtual machine image of Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu on there, uh, which is what we're using. And what that'll essentially do is allow you to run Windows, but you're running like a little program of Linux. It's kind of cool. Um, if you really don't want to use a Linux uh, or Ubuntu image, uh, you can download a software called MinGW, I believe. It allows you to run like Linux environment on Windows. It, it kind of simulates it. I wouldn't recommend it, though. I would recommend actually getting an Ubuntu image. Uh, to get one, I will show you guys where to get one. All you need to do is type in Ubuntu download. The link will be in the description below. And it's right here, okay? I'm using 14.04. You're most likely going to want to choose 64-bit uh, because 32-bit is old and, uh, well, that architecture isn't really used anymore. Unless your machine's from, like, 2007, uh, you probably have a 64-bit uh, 64 computer anyways. I can't talk right now. Um, 
and just download that ISO and there's many tutorials on how to use it. Once you're in Ubuntu, you're going to need to do something as well. You're going to need to go into the terminal. Uh, what you can do is hit Control alt t this will bring up the terminal, or you can just go to this little icon here and search terminal and um, open it up. It's like this little icon here. If anybody's ever used a Mac before, it's kind of the same icon. This is the equivalent of command prompt of Windows. and we're going to be doing a few things in here. So first, we're going to want to update our repositories before we do anything, because we want to make sure we're up to date. So to do that, all you need to do is type sudo apt-get install, or sorry, update. And that's just going to update all of your repositories, make sure everything's, um, you know, make sure everything's good. And once this is over, we can install what we're going to need. Uh, so once it's over, we'll get our cursor back. I'm just going to clear the screen, because that's annoying. And what we're going to do now is type sudo apt get install build dash essential I believe it's called build dash essential and what this will do is it'll allow us to get all the tools we're gonna need to be able to build C programs like GCC and all these other things um, it's gonna do all that for us so just type that in hit enter um, mine is already installed so it's just gonna it's just gonna say zero to remove zero newly installed zero upgrade whatever um, for you it will have a press Y or no to install and it'll tell you how much space it's going to take. Press Y and hit enter to install the package. And once you have, you can get started with the tutorial. So I've created a folder called tutorials um, just to keep everything organized. Now, I'm going to cap this right now. I am not going to be providing source codes for this tutorial and it's not because I'm lazy. It's because I want you guys to type these programs in yourself. I want you guys, if you have a second computer, that'd be great because you could um, watch the video and pause and play on a separate computer and code on your main computer or vice versa, however you want to do it. If not, that's fine. You can just keep switching between tabs. That can get annoying though, or switching between programs, I mean, um, which is fine too. Um, but what I'm saying is I want you guys to write this code through as we're going through because that's how you learn. You might be just watching the video and go, yeah, I'm, I understand what that code means. I understand there's in main and stuff like that. And you may think you understand it. Maybe you know what that does. But when you actually go to apply it, you're not going to have any clue what to do. Um, so write it down. That's how you're going to learn the most. So go through it while I'm going through it. Pause the video. Do whatever. Just make sure you write these how I write these um, so that you can follow and that you actually learn from it okay so in this setup video after you've done the build essential we're gonna make folders for each tutorial I go through okay just to keep everything nice and organized you can do this through the GUI if you want I'm going to do everything through the command line that includes coding and that is just because I'm lazy. I don't want to switch programs. I don't want to go to a file explorer and then go to Sublime Text to code. No. I'm just going to do everything from the command line because I don't want to use my mouse at all. Okay. So what we're going to need to do, uh, if you want to do this through the command line, you type mkdir. That stands for make dir. And I'm going to call the first folder tutorial1. Okay. Um, if you're just doing it through GUI, it's just, you know, right-click, create folder, whatever. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, through command line, I'm not going to be giving, like, a full bash tutorial throughout it. I will be using a few commands and explain them a little bit. Um, so to create a directory, you just use mkdir. And if we go ahead and list the directory using ls, we will see that that folder is now there. To get to that folder in command line, we just use cd, which stands for change directory. And we go to tutorial 1, and you will see... Well, now we're now in that directory, and if we go ahead and list files, there's nothing there um, because we just created that directory. Now we're going to need to create two files. Now we're not going to be coding them or implementing them in this tutorial. We're just setting up everything. Um, so you can do this multiple ways. In the GUI, you can just like right-click, create new file, like a text file, and rename it and whatever. Um, I'm going to be doing this through command line. So I'm going to show you guys two ways to do this: an easier way and a little bit of a harder way. An easy way, nano. And I'm going to be calling this makefile. Okay, this is going to be our makefile. We are going to implement this in the next tutorial. If we hit this, this brings up nano, which is a program that's built into GNU. All we're going to do, type one character, doesn't matter what it is, 
backspace so that it's completely blank because we're not implementing it right now. Just hit Control X and that'll ask you to save the modified buffer. Hit Y and then file name to write. Keep it at make file with a capital M. Hit enter. Okay, now if we go ahead and list the directory, it should include that make file. Be aware there is no file extension on that. It is simply just make file with a capital M, and you need that capital M as well. Now the harder method and how I'm going to be coding this isn't going to affect you guys. You guys can use any code editor you want. You can use Notepad, Notepad++, Sublime Text, whatever. Um, I'm going to be using Vim, okay, and you guys don't have to. Um, it's just my preference. Like I said, I don't want to... You know, I'm just going to do everything in the terminal. So I'm going to call this t1.c, just because I'm lazy, .c. That is an extension you are going to need. That is the extension for C source files. There you go. Now just hit enter. This is Vim, by the way. So all I'm going to do is, uh, right now, we are in command mode. If you want to enter insert mode for future reference, just hit I or any key on the keyboard and you can type or whatever. Make sure the file is blank. Hit C, uh, control C uh, to go back into command mode. Hit the colon WQ. Okay, don't hit Q because that'll just quit. What WQ does is it stands for write and quit, okay, or save quit. Just hit enter. Now if we go ahead and list, we have makefile and t1.c. Make sure you have these two files in your directory. Now you're going to do this for every tutorial that we go through. I'm not going to preface each tutorial with how to do this. Um, so just make sure you memorize this and you'll get used to it anyways. And uh, this is how we're going to be setting up projects from now on. And this is how I recommend you guys set up projects. Make sure it's everything's nice and or organized. Um, don't make it so that an IDE the problem with an IDE is you become dependent on it, but if you use it this way, you learn how things are done, you do it yourself, uh, you learn how your structure is, you're not depending on an IDE, like what are the environment variables, um, and another thing with an IDE too is sometimes they will implement arbitrary code into your program and what I mean by that is they will add you know security checks and and all of these other things into the program's assembly and that could run to things that you don't want in your program. So it's better to just code it pure. Okay? In the next tutorial, we are going to be implementing both makefile and t1.c. This was just a setup and an introduction to the C tutorial series, and I will see you guys in tutorial 2.